Hype TV people! So, we have a problem inside this house, and that is, stand back here so you can see, the problem is, it's a lovely great big gable end, it's a, it's a nice day in Stoke, look at this, sunny Stoke folks, sunny Stoke! So we've got, to the side of this property, we've got all this, these built up flower beds there that the, the council have put in, we've got all this new deck, this paving going in. Now, you probably can't tell from there, but what we have got is, I'm, I'm slightly higher, which means I'm elevated, so the, so the floor level here is higher than the level right at that house, where the tickly stick is humbly showing you where, where the tickly stick is, folks. Look at the tickly stick. So what we've got is when the rainwater comes down, we've got a thing called gravity, and the water runs down to the lowest point. So it runs down to these places. So what we have got between these flower beds, so the, the rainwater that comes here runs down and goes nicely into a grid. Yeah, there's a grid there, tickling stick showing you. Same there, and the same for every one of these. So anything that comes down here is covered by a grid, but I should turn around there, anything that comes down, sorry, from there, doesn't go in a grid, it runs down to the house. Can you see the problem now, folks? And this is what we call penetrating damp. So this needs moving, but what we have got here, as you can see, is we've got some shaped gully-like stones. But because the rainwater comes down here and then runs down, actually got vegetation growing out so because this has been like this for years and years and years all the way down there is where them plants have now started to grow through they are growing through these little bits these lines these joints further down so what that's done is it's dislodged it so what's happening is when the rainwater's coming down it's going between them joints and it's finding its way into the property and it's causing damp so this technically is an issue for the council However, the council are very, very, very slow in doing anything about anything. And they're also very, very, very slow about admitting liability. So unfortunately, the owner of this house has got a little bit of a fight on his hands with regards to what we can and can't do with the council. So we're in negotiation stages or in, in, in communication with him. And just so that you understand or you can see the severity of the damp, it's a nice sunny dry day outside, as you've seen. But if you look there, look at the colour of the brickwork here. It's nice and dry. And then look at it there, because this bit here is below ground. So we've drilled and injected. So I'll show you some of the damp rods that we use. There's one there. There's one there, look. So we've injected it all, and you can see that it's worked because above it, the colour of the bricks is there, it's dry. But below it, it's absolutely sod and wet. So, what's happening then, is when the water's coming through there, I'm currently stood on the timber floor. So the water that's coming through is now running down, and it's going to start attacking the joists down there. So we've done a repair on these. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now, we still need to solve the problem with regards to the penetrating damp coming in. And installing the membrane will give us a little bit of time and to stop it damaging the plaster. But what's going to stop it damaging the, the floor joists? Well, my friends, look at this. This is like the Blue Peter. Here's one I've prepared earlier. So if you have got issues with penetrating damp that's coming through the walls, if we didn't, what we do to pass, this is a building regs thing, is we wrap the end in this plastic, which is called DPM, damp proof membrane, which is just thick plastic. It's 1200 gauge thick. And you literally just wrap the ends in it and staple it to it. And the idea is that as water's coming through and traveling down here, it's not getting into the timber. It's still in the masonry, but it'll run down, but it's not going to affect the floor. 
Now you can tell we've done this because it's, this fix has been done before. So you can see how we've had to cut the ends off. The previous people that have done this had extended it, put it in there, but not wrapped it in DPM. So the penetrating damp that was coming out there from outside, which is still the issue now, would have been coming through. But because he hadn't wrapped the ends in DPM, because he hadn't been signed off or done correctly, <clears throat> all these ends were rotten. So I've had to come back and redo their job and do it like so. And then these have to be bolted every so often. As you can see, there's lots and lots of bolts all there. So we've literally changed the ends of every single one of these. So we, so we know that this is done correctly. Like I say, the building inspector signed it off. But for any of you out there that want to know how you, how you repair the ends of your joist, your floor joist, if they are rotten due to that, you get the correct size spec timber. You have to drill it, I think it's every 400, and bolt it. It has to be nut and bolted with the, with the coach bolts or, or threaded bar. It has to be nut and bolted, it can't be screwed basically. You do it through there every 400, a good overlap, say about a metre and a half. And then you must wrap the ends in DP, DPM to protect it from any more, any, any well, anything in the future with regards to damp affecting the timber. And that there, folks, is the correct repair. So what we've got is penetrating damp coming from water outside. So it's coming through the brickwork, hitting that stage. We can prove that the damp rods are working because the water is staying below that course because above there is dry and you can see the colour of the bricks there is proof but below it is wet and obviously water runs down. So we've got an issue there and it's a council issue really. It's a party wall issue. So what we're gonna do is to try and give a little bit of peace of mind to the client. If we've got some tanking membrane and what we do with this is as you can see, it's perforated and it's solid plastic. And what we do is we actually roll this out along the wall there drill some holes and knock some plastic plugs in. We've got a box full here, knock one of these through. So we literally roll that against the wall, drill some holes and smash these little plugs in. So these little teeth on the end of the plug there grip the brickwork and it's got a nice big head on there. And the idea is there that there's no way in this world that that water is ever going to come through into the plasterboard because that tanking membrane will definitely stop it. However, that will stop it damaging the plaster and the skirting board, but what it won't do is stop the water coming in and running down. I'm purely putting this in so that I can carry on with the project inside here. This is it. I'll show you a picture now of what it should look like when it's been stapled along there. So it should look something like this. Shutting! That's how it should look and that's how it will look once we've finished. But for now, the idea is that we're going to put this on there for now so that we can carry on plasterboarding and carry on moving the project along, which will give us enough time to sort it out with the council and stop the penetrating damp coming in. So that is not rising damp, folks. That is penetrating damp, my favourite type. So there we go, folks. 